So before talking about the maximizing margin, we have to understand how to measure the distance between the point and line. Okay. So first, so distance between the x naught and uh, this line is this one. So when we have x naught here and when we have one line here, then the, we want uh, the dis uh, distance between this point and the line. And that is this one. Okay, so we are going to prove that one. So let xA and xB on the same line. So we have two points here. Then, since these two points are on the same line, so this one and this one should be the same. Okay, then we can rearrange the term. So by this, W is orthogonal to the line. Okay, so we have W like this. So if we extend, then we have orthogonal kind of a vector to this line. Okay, now uh, let's check the distance from the origin to the parallel line to this one, passing this one. So I'm talking about this line. So this line is parallel to this line, but it is passing x naught. Okay, then you know how to calculate the distance. So this is what we can get. Okay, so we actually normalize this w by this, and then we calculate the inner product between this vector and uh, this point. And then this one is actually the magnitude of uh, this vector from origin to this line. Okay, so this is what we have. And then what we are interested in is this distance. So we have to calculate this one because since we have this one, so now we have to calculate this one. Okay, then the distance from the origin to the line, let's say we have xA on the line, so we can get this one. And then as you know, uh, this one is this line. So with this equation, this one is actually this one. Okay, then uh, the distance between x naught and uh, this line is this one minus this one. So this is what we have. This is exactly the same as this one. Okay, so now we can calculate the distance between a point and a line. Okay. Now uh, let's calculate the margin between two classes. Okay, so we have one line and another line. So now the margin, margin between the two classes is this one. And then that margin is 2 over the norm of W. That's the margin. And then let's prove. Since we assume a linear separable data set, we can draw two lines like this. So this one corresponds to this one and this one corresponds to this one. So this one is the closest line touching any kind of uh, point in this class. And uh, this line is the furthest line from the origin while touching some kind of points in this class. Okay. And then uh, the distance from the origin to this line, this line is uh, this one. Let's say there is some one point here and then the, if that is x naught and then this is the distance since this is the the line so with this one actually this is the distance so this is what we have okay and then likewise the distance from the origin to this line this line is this one so this one is this one and then the margin is this one minus this one. Okay, then the 2 over the norm of W. Okay, so in this slide, we can see that the maximizing margin is actually minimizing W, the norm of W. Okay, so now we want to minimize W. That's what we want. Okay, so now we are going to formulate uh, the problem uh, with all the knowledge from the previous slide. First, we want to minimize this one. So this constant is just not so when we take a derivative, then it will cancel. So we just put this constant, but basically we want to minimize this one. Okay. But 
there is a constraint here. So uh, when we apply these samples to this equation, then it should be greater than or equal to 1. Okay, because this one is the smallest one. Okay, and then the, in this class, yi is 1. It, it is a label. In this class, this one should be less than or equal to minus 1. Okay, so this one is minus 1, and these ones are less than minus 1. And then yi is minus 1. So if we multiply this one and the yi, or this one and the yi, it should be greater than or equal to 1 for all i. Okay, so no matter what kind of point, from this class or from this class, it doesn't matter, since we have a class information here. So if we multiply this label and this equation, then it should be greater than or equal to 1. Okay, so to solve this problem, we need the Lagrangian optimization techniques like uh, KKT conditions. So let's talk about KKT conditions in general. So given a convex optimization problem, so minimizing this, this is objective function, and then there are some constraints, inequality constraint and equality constraint. So in, in, in SVM problems, we don't have equality constraint, but you know, in general, we can have in, uh, inequality and equality constraint. And then the problem can form a generalized Lagrangian function like this. Okay. And uh, these are Lagrangian multipliers. And then the, there is a theorem, the first order necessary condition theorem. So if W star is a local solution of f of W satisfying all the constraints, then there are alpha star and the beta star such that the following are satisfied at this point. So look at this one. This is our parameter. And when we take a derivative, it should be zero. Okay. And then this one is our constraint. Okay. Then this one is another constraint. And the Lagrangian multiplier should be positive. Or it could be zero. And then this one, this one is, uh, is especially important because these are KKT conditions, but this one is actually KKT complementary condition. Okay, so we're gonna use this one many times. But anyway, what this equation says is that when we have an inequality constraint, then this Lagrangian multiplier or this equation, either this one or that one should be zero. And actually only one of either this one or this one should be zero. That's what KKT conditions say. And then we're going to use that uh, KKT conditions in the SVM problems. Okay, so when we use the Lagrangian function for the SVM problem, okay, so we have objective function and we have constraint and then we have Lagrangian multipliers. And then we can uh, rearrange this term. So we have here, and uh, we have here, and we have this one. Okay, so this one is a Lagrangian primal problem. So we just uh, formulated the objective function and the constraint with the Lagrangian function. Okay, so it's a primal problem. And then using the KKT conditions and the primal problem, so we can take a derivative with the W and then also, we have a bias, so we can uh, take a derivative with the respect to the bias. And this should be zero. So by this one, uh, we can have this one. Okay. And then if we calculate the W transpose W to calculate the norm of W, then it is actually this one. And then by this, this one is zero. So this term will be zero, okay? And then now these two terms will be this one because this one can be rewritten by this one. And then this one also, alpha i, y, i. And if we use this w, like uh, summation, alpha j, y, j, x, j, and x, i, and it's basically the same as this one. So since we have uh, 1 over 2 and this one is a, a minus 1, so we have minus 1 over 2. Okay. 
then this term goes to here so this is Lagrangian dual problem okay so look at this one this function depends on alpha not w not the b originally w and b these are the parameters in the primal problem but in the uh, Lagrangian dual problem now we have alpha it was a Lagrangian multiplier here but now it is our parameter not the wb okay and then uh, as you can see here we're, we're going to use a kernel trick for this one later okay so just to keep this in mind so in this equation the x they have uh, the inner product form so xi and xj so we don't have xi separately so when we have xi then always we have inner product form here that's one thing that we are going to use for the kernel trick so now by the kkt complementary condition this should be zero and only one of either alpha i or this one should be zero so when the alpha i is non-zero so if it is positive then it should be zero so which means only when the alpha i is positive then do we have the points on this line or this line when the alpha i is positive the samples are on these two boundary lines okay so we call them support vectors they actually support the classification boundaries they support the boundaries so we call them support vectors so in this example we have a three support vectors only they have a positive alpha i and then for all the other points alpha i is zero which means this one is positive this one w transpose xi plus b is greater than one okay so now the ultimate separating hyperplane this one is this one we don't actually solve these equations by ourselves we're going to use some tools later so if we solve this lagrangian dual problem then we have alpha and the y and x they are the data samples we already have so now w star is given by this one and it goes i goes from one to n but actually we can consider just support vectors okay so in this case we can have just we have only three support vectors in this example so it's a simple and then b star is obtained by this one so we already have yi xi and w star and then bi can be obtained by this one so actually by rearranging these terms b is given by this equation so this is the the solution of uh, svm when the problem is the data set is linearly separable